New York Times writer Frank Bruni didn't think anything about it when he woke up with blurred vision in one eye. This was back in 2017. Well, it turned out he had suffered a small stroke and would never again be able to see out of that eye completely. For a professional writer and an avid reader, as you can imagine, many thought this could have been the end of his former life. But in his new book, it's called The Beauty of Dusk, on vision lost and found, we're happy to say. Bruni tells us how he gained a new perspective on perseverance, empathy, and humanity. The book, we should say, is published by Simon & Schuster, which is a division of Paramount. Frank Bruni, good morning. But we want to also want you to know we'd be doing this book even if it wasn't a division. Of <laughs> it is that good, Frank Bruni, and it's so good to see you. It's good to so see good to see you. There's a line in the book where you say, when God gives you lemons, take a bow. I love that. <laughs> so take us to that night where you go to bed and you wake up and you can't see in one eye. What did you think? had happened or was happening to you? Well, at first I thought that nothing had happened. You know, I'm, I'm a boomer generation person, you know, so I have that sort of sense of invincibility, which is a false sense. And I thought, you know, everything's fixable. So first I thought I just had to wash my eye. Yeah. Then I thought, no, it's my eyeglasses. And only as the hours went on and really into the next day did I think something might be wrong. You know, and, and then it wasn't I, total dark, or was it? Was it total darkness or blackness, or what? What did it look like? What did it? It was as if a dappled fog had moved into my field of vision and was mm. over the right side of it, and very, very scarily, it was making the words on a computer screen shimmy and swim and tilt, and, and that was terrifying to me because, as you noted in the intro, I, that's my living. Yeah, right now, you, know? you go to the doctor and you hear words that nobody ever wants to hear at the doctor, where she says, "This is bad." Mm. This is bad. And then you're told that you had had a stroke in the eye. And part of the treatment involved an injection right in the eye, Frank. Oh, gosh. Oh, God, that made my skin read. crawl. Oh. It was very hard to read. And it's in the first chapter, too. Take us into what that was like and what was the purpose of that. Well, that was in the first two weeks, and I decided early on that I was going to try to be as active as opposed to passive about what I was going through. And so I qualified for and enrolled in several experimental trials. And the first one involved injections into the eye, yes. which in are, the eye. Which are yeah. about as pleasant <laughs> as yeah. they sound. Yeah. Um, and the other one, I actually had to learn to inject myself twice a week for six months. But here's the thing. I mean, that sounds, you know, people wince. It sounds terrible. I got through all of that, and mm. as a result of that, and this is really the message of the book, as, as a result of that, I learned not how weak and fragile I am, mm -hmm. but how strong I am. Mm. And I think we're all a lot stronger than we realize. Yeah. Well, so w wisdom is always hard won, but it usually does not involve an injection into the eyeball. <laughs> That's right. That That's is a right. pretty high hurdle for wisdom. Uh, but, right. but talk a little bit about what else you learned emotionally and philosophically about life. I mean, in the title, dusk does not mean literal dusk. It means more than that. No, dusk refers sort of the length of a human day. And I feel that when you get an affliction like this um, early-ish in life, it's sort of like a foretaste or a preview of aging, of old mm. age. Um, and it forces you to make a decision about whether you're going to focus on what's been taken from you, on what's been lost, on your limits, or whether you're going to focus on all the potency you still have and what remains. I think that's a challenge, a kind of fork in the road that we all encounter when we're aging. And I think it comes to you earlier if you have a sort of medical odyssey like mine. And I also remember... You sound um, so rational about this, Frank, right now. I mean, <laughs> you sound so logical about it. I, you must have had times where you just freaked out. Yeah. Like, what the hell is happening to me? And it must have been scary and terrifying, too. Right now, it does sound very philosophical about what you learned, but in that moment... You certainly couldn't have felt that way. I was scared reading the book for you. <laughs> there were moments when I was terrified. There were moments that I was when I, when I was very, very angry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and there yeah. was other stuff going on in life. A, a 10-year relationship ended right at that time. Yeah. My father was going through medical stuff. Um, so yeah, there were moments when I was really angry. But I took a really careful look around me. I surveyed all the people around me. I mean, visually surveyed with my yes. one good eye. Yeah. Um, and I realized all of us have gone through pain, are in pain, have struggled. And so if you do that, if you really look accurately at the world around you, you don't ask why me, yeah. you ask why, why not, not me. me. You write something that's very powerful. Um, you write, we have no control over what happens to us. We have enormous control over what happened to us. W what does that mean to you? You can, as, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you can decide to stew in what you believe to be your misfortune. You can do that sort of accounting of, of ways in which you've been cheated or challenged, or you can do a different tally of ways in which you've been blessed. So we talked about writing. It is harder for me to write than it ever was before. I have to budget time and circle back to check for typos that I never made. But here's the thing. People still want my words. You're here talking to me about yes. a book I've written. Mm. I choose to focus on that. Yeah, your best lesson that you learned in all this? I think my best lesson is about human nimbleness. 
Um, I think that we are I like that. we are so much more adaptable than we realize. Um, I thought I'd never be able to listen to audiobooks. It was something I couldn't do. Now I listen to them on 1.6 speed. And that's just a small thing. It's an emblem and a metaphor. And I think if you realize how nimble and adaptable you are as a human being, um, nothing's as scary as it was. Well, before. you're one of the most nimble writers working today. Yes. Very elegant, very funny as well. We should yeah. point that out. It's also, not a the, book. also in the book where there was some misdiagnosis. That's why I won't tell you what it is, but people really need to take agency of their own health. Yeah. Don't always believe what the doctor says. But this New York Times review out today, may I just read this one sentence, John Tower? Yes, thank you. <laughs> this isn't the sad story of a man who lost his sight. It is a generous narrative of a student who sought wisdom when trials appeared in his life. That's you, Frank Bruni. Really good to see you, looking so good, looking so healthy. Now teaching journalism at Duke. All yeah. right, Love I would this. take thank your you. class. Thank you for being so Frank frank. Frank Bruni, the beauty of <laughs> dust goes on sale tomorrow wherever you like to buy your books.